I'm one third of a group called Terra Zero, and I'm here today to present a project of ours that, yep, launched on Monday, which is called Flower Tokens, which is a, a kind of bizarre looking like web interface with a load of flowers on it out there. Um, but before I dive into Flower Tokens, I kind of want to start off by contextualizing that within the history of Terra Zero as like a broader project, because as a project, it's, it's also uh, maybe a little bit messy in terms of name recognition. Um, and then I'll kind of like walk through aspects of the Flower Tokens project, kind of enmeshing like the technical and the conceptual like areas of interest that we were kind of uh, working with at each stage. So Terra Zero basically began two and a half, three, almost three years ago, um, as just purely like an art piece or a concept piece, which was kind of exploring the implications of using blockchain technology, um, in our case, Ethereum, uh, to kind of create, or the possibility of creating like a self-owning, autonomously managing piece of land. So it was kind of an entity which is like an augmented or like hybrid ecosystem entity, which was made up of a forest, which is pictures here, with our kind of like flag, which has now become an emblem by accident, um, and a decentralized autonomous organization which is also referred to as a DAO. Um, so for those who don't, I, I'll briefly explain what a DAO is without getting like mad technical, because I could just talk about this for half an hour. Um, but it's a very fluid term. It's basically just an organization or some kind of organizational structure that is instantiated on a blockchain and is constituted of smart contracts, which we kind of briefly talked about before. Um, and these, in essence, are computer programs that are also instantiated on a blockchain. Um, but what is really interesting about them, and which is why there's so much potential, both in, in kind of like every sphere, like technical and also like real kind of conceptual boundaries, I think you can push, is that smart contracts, these basically just like very simple computer programs, um, can actually hold their own cryptocurrency wallets and they can self execute uh, whatever their functions or whatever their code uh, allows them to do on the occurrence of a certain event or a certain state. Uh, so that could be if, um, obviously, if a human interacts with them. But more interestingly, that could be if another smart contract interacts with them. Um, and so DAOs, which are made up of smart contracts, can also like hold cryptocurrency and like self-execute, which is acting in a more real sense um, with like a certain degree of autonomy, admittedly within like functional preset parameters, but um, you know, the possibilities if you start envisaging having like meshes of these interacting with each other, you start getting really interesting like emergent forms of behavior. Um, and so in the scenario that the original kind of concept piece sketched out, the legal ownership of the forest, like the other, the physical side of this hybrid entity, um, was actually transferred to the DAO itself, much in the same way that like corporations are currently able to act as legal persons in certain regards and like own property. And then this DAO basically mediated all of the potential inter economic interactions that was had between the physical forest and human beings who would pay the DAO to chop down certain trees that the DAO, using sensors, uh, basically deemed necessary to have removed in order to maintain a healthy ecosystem. So it was this kind of... Uh, in a somewhat more backwards way than maybe traditional like environmental conservation. Um, it was like resilience through active pruning and active technological integration into an ecosystem. Um, and then basically the DAO used this capital to like pay off the original landowners, which was hypothetically in this instance us, um, and then basically own itself after it paid off its debt. So then we kind of ended this concept piece with a, a kind of a technologically augmented ecosystem that via blockchain technology was able to become like a self-sovereign autonomous economic unit. And yeah, over the course of the last couple of years, it's Terra Zero is now the name that we've stuck with um, and has transformed into kind of a group of artists, developers, theorists, researchers, um, basically all exploring the creation of these kind of hybrid ecosystems in uh, we kind of stick with the term the technosphere. Um, there's also a certain amount to which we kind of go off Benjamin Bratton's idea of like 
the stack. Um, and we're basically envisaging trying to break down or trying to make visible how this breakdown between um, kind of the human world and the natural world actually just doesn't really make any sense because we've kind of pushed ourselves to every corner of it anyway. Um, and in the last couple of months, we've been developing a strategy to push the ideas and the thoughts which kind of originated from the first idea of Terra Zero into, into other areas. Um, and we're starting to do this by kind of like create the building blocks of what these future DAOs would look like. Um, and we're doing this by a kind of smaller projects and technical experiments, much like flower tokens. Um, so these are some of the kind of questions that we have to ask ourselves in a very technical sense. And each of these experiments, um, which kind of sit somewhere in between the art world and like the kind of more technical MVP world, um, tries to kind of focus or tries to answer on one of them. And then over the next kind of year, a couple of years, we're gonna start building on that hopefully more. So, you know, um, in the first case, what does, what does verification of information actually look like when you're talking about a natural asset like a flower um, in a decentralized way? Um, what are the legal questions concerning the autonomy of these like hybrid systems? So actually, luckily, um, the Maltese Digital Innovation Authority actually answered one of these questions for us about in June and said that a DAO actually is a technical arrangement. Um, so basically it acts like a limited company, which is um, the original concept that we actually stuck with um, in the first concept paper, which was a, a nice kind of like mixing of fates. Um, but basically what this means is that now you could have a decentralized autonomous organization own land anywhere in the European Union and act as a company with legal backing to this which obviously is incredible, but then the question that you have to ask is, how can we have DAOs gain this kind of status without the legal gatekeeping of um, the Maltese Digital Innovation Authority? And the final kind of like main aspect that we're focusing on, which is what I'm gonna be more uh, intensely kind of unpacking in this talk, is what does the tokenization of natural or like growing, changing things actually look like. Um, blockchains, as much potential as they have, are fundamentally very static and quite <clears throat> kind of labor intensive. So working out how you can actually set up a meaningful and, I don't know, a, an interaction that actually has a point as opposed to just pushing data into a blockchain um, is one of the big questions that we kind of have to start looking at how to try and solve. Um, and basically, we think that by trying to address these issues um, and also try and make them more accessible and more visible, which is something that we're also doing with these experiments, um, they're important to address because they basically serve as the foundation for like, further discussion, open discourses about these kind of tech, but also like providing in and of themselves a really valuable source of information for the kind of areas of experimentation that two years ago were completely hypothetical. Um, and solving these issues are kind of give us a chance to start building structures or like building organizational structures that would give us the opportunity of rethinking kind of existing and pretty ineffective governance and regulatory structures um, that we could use to kind of start creating a more sustainable and resilient ecosystem. Um, so this is our, the user interface of Flower Tokens. Uh, like I said, it's an experiment centered around the last of those three points. So the process of tokenizing and like to a certain extent verifying information about a natural asset, um, as well as exploring what binding data or like the binding of a token sitting on a blockchain and a natural asset actually achieves. So, um, you know, what kind of entity are we actually discussing here? Is it a meaningful relation? But also what scenarios arise in the case that we created in a web marketplace as well, where you monetize it. Um, like Barry was joking about dropping the price to 10 ETH, but there are tokens that have already sold for like one ETH, which is madness. Um, 
And <laughs> to make a bit of a crypto joke, will we get flower whales turning up? <laughs> so we created a web marketplace, basically, where users can buy, trade, and speculate on tokenized dahlias. So the physical installation that you're seeing here uh, consists of a grow rack with a watering system, 100 dahlias, and a camera, which we're kind of using as our oracle. Um, and this camera provides the pictures for the web interface that we're seeing here. So we're seeing kind of like the camera eye view, um, and also the information about each flower. And each of these dahlias is linked to um, an ERC721 token on the Ethereum mainnet. Um, a brief aside, like, when people usually talk about tokens, um, these things are like fungible assets. They're divisible basically to uh, 18, yeah, uh, 18 points. And any ERC20 token is basically the same as another, much like a dollar is the same as another dollar. Um, but the 721 token standard is a non-fungible token. So it can't be split into smaller denominations and each token in and of itself is kind of a unique, non-divisible thing. Um, nor are they an equal replacement for one another. Um, they're completely unique, much like natural assets are. And so obviously the next step once this had happened was, okay, if we have non-fungible tokens and we have non-fungible assets, then we have to kind of combine them and see what happens. Um, so basically, as was already mentioned, if the owner of a flower wishes to take their flower out of the uh, experiment. The token is burnt, so it's kind of removed from the system uh, as the token, as the flower is removed from the physical installation. So we're trying to really keep this kind of like data consistency, um, or like some semblance of data consistency. And as was mentioned before, to the best of our knowledge, this is the first instantiation of a crypto collectible, um, much like a crypto key, involving a real world or a physical asset. And if we're pushing the boat out, we could even kind of conceptually label flower tokens as maybe the prototype of a new form of like living crypto tokens. Um, but whether that stands up, only time will tell. So <laughs> a point about the flowers themselves as well, because this joke has kind of been made already. Um, at first, we actually wanted to use tulips. And ah. yeah, thanks. Uh, but after kind of iterating through a couple of test plants with the setup, uh, we decided on dahlias partially because dahlias actually really fit the conditions that we're operating under and tulips are a nightmare to grow inside. Um, and partially because as funny as it was, we didn't really want to like accidentally affirm this mistaken analogy between tulip mania and like massive crypto hype. Um, and yeah, it could have just been taken really out of context. So yeah, we stuck with dahlias. So what are the issues that we're trying to unpack and make visible and kind of just ex like work out during this experiment. Because um, even if the system in its own right works as like a tiny little experimental microeconomy in like technical and economic terms, um, mainly the project functions as this kind of a visualization of certain mechanisms. So it demonstrates what's possible uh, with this kind of tokenization process, but also what's not, which kind of is more important. Um, and the question that we're really focused on here is like, how can we ensure that this token stays truthfully linked to the changing conditions of an asset? Obviously, the link between a physical thing and a token already is like pretty tenuous and requires like a certain um, emplacement of like abstract value on top of that relation for it to mean anything. So it has, how do we like keep it updated so as to hopefully like buoy up this link between the two things? Um, so in practical terms, we can see what this means right here. So this is uh, all the data about a particular plant. Uh, in this case, this is token 18, or the flower that makes up the part of the kind of hybrid entity that I'm talking about. It's difficult to like talk about with any like certainty on this matter. Um, and just a quick note as well, like the, the box around it is just like my edit for the presentation. It's not part of our UI, just to like make that completely clear. Um, so, can you see my mouse? No. So, in the top, just under token 18, in the top left, where the white box is, because I wanted to keep the owner anonymous, um, this is the data that we kind of have on chain. So, we see the owner and we see their address. And at the bottom, we can also see how much that was bought for. And this isn't like particularly interesting. This is 
just normal data that you would get on a block explorer. So what's more important to look at is the data that's actually originating off chain. And so it's being pushed into the blockchain. Um, and this is the data about the physical characteristics of the flower itself, so its height, whether it's blooming, and what rate it's growing. And this data link between a token and a living thing is interesting from a technical perspective, you know, aside from the aspects about creating a living token, but it's also really interesting from an economic perspective. So it's really only on in the project. Like I said, we launched on Monday. Um, so we haven't started noticing any massive kind of patterns or correlations yet between the physical aspects and the ascribed economic value in this little marketplace. Um, apart from the fact that the flowers that sold first were those that are bigger, had a few more leaves. However, on the night of the launch, we had a flower that was resold by someone else for one ETH, which is like 360-ish euros, I think it's like $400. Um, and just to completely buck the tiny or trend we'd already noticed, this flower was minute. So that didn't necessarily work as well. And it's quite a nice visualization of asking what sort of abstract values are actually being attributed to these flowers and whether or not this is actually related to like functional value. Um, and that's gonna be quite interesting to watch as the process goes on. Like the, the project's gonna run for four or five months um, because Dali is a perennial, they'll die off again, but the, the kind of the roots will remain alive. So anyone who doesn't want to claim it, we're going to plant them in a park in Berlin and then they can bloom next year. And if any of you are particularly interested in terms of like scraping data from this, um, whoops, there we go. Um, Marcus Jones, who's a data scientist at Ocean Protocol, has actually made a really nice repository, um, which generates stats about the project by scraping Hashbase, which is where we're keeping all of the information about the tokens. And the day after the launch, uh, and for those who use Twitter quite regularly, there's a flower token bot, which tweets about which flowers are available for which price. And this isn't actually ours. We have no idea who made it. It just appeared and got linked into our Slack. So if anyone finds out as well, that'd be nice to know. Um, so going back to the source of this linked data, the oracle that I discussed before, um, the source of the information that update, updates the tokens and kind of retains this link between the physical plant and the token that represents it in each case um, is just an SLR camera that we've hooked up on the wall. So it takes a camera, it takes a photo every 13 minutes um, and is triggered by an on-site computer. And then this computer processes, so it crops and resizes the image and then pushes it onto the web interface. And what also happens is this local server that is pushed to also analyzes the captured images. Um, so we're using something called Plant CV, which is a, a kind of fork of Open CV, which is just to do with plants, as the name suggests, um, to analyze and kind of extract certain values from these pictures. Uh, so like height and the pixel width of different areas of color of the color spectrum. And then this allows us to then calculate like the growing rate, see how tall it is, and see if a flower is blooming. So here are just a couple of kind of print screens from that process, so you can have a look. Um, and then the data is stored um, as metadata. So the actual tokens themselves on the blockchain have um, a, a string, which is basically a URL um, referring to uh, a DAT um, repo, and um, DAT, for those of you who don't know, is a really nice distributed storage solution um, that's a really interesting piece of like the kind of newly emergent peer-to-peer -peer web that's also coming back in vogue, like as the blockchain hype is kind of dying away or going into more practical areas. Um, and so this stuff right here, basically, the, all the information about the flower is just stored as JSON data. Um, passed around whoever is hosting the actual DAT files themselves. Um, there we go. And it's also located at Trust, which is a co-working space in Berlin. And if anyone's around in Berlin and wants to like visit, they're more than welcome. And uh, they can also come and collect our plant, but email us first. <laughs> and basically, yeah, the project's intended to end with like the decay of the flowers, but since this time span varies quite a lot, depending on all the kind of general conditions, it could actually take longer and or until the people who run trust want us to get rid of it, and then we'll see. 
Um, so before I kind of wrap up, I also want to highlight that this was a project that involved a lot of work from a lot of people, and it was like a properly collaborative effort. Um, so yeah, I just want to thank Georgia and Lewis for do it, like doing the miracle on our front end that I ruined with putting that little purple box around it for my presentation, um, as well as Gregor, uh, Arthur, who's hosting us at Trust, uh, Billy Runcamp, who did um, a lot of checking of our smart contracts and found a couple of bugs before we launched, which is great, um, as well as Johannes and Andy, who kind of worked on the new website with us. And kind of using that thanking or like the highlighting the fact that this was a collaborative effort, um, I want to kind of segue into like my last more general point about our process as kind of a, a loose research group. And our method is really based on the idea that any kind of constructive approach with, within this quite murky art and tech kind of mixture um, is really much dependent on like how you can construct those future scenarios is really dependent on the different narratives of the future that you actually see as being potentially realizable, right? And how, potential, how potentially realizable something is kind of relies on your knowledge of the scenarios related to them. Um, and so via taking a kind of iterative experimental approach, apart from the fact that it just works in terms of time and our lack of budget, um, it allows us basically to, to kind of constantly update and constantly change these narratives as you're iteratively creating kind of like micro environments and experiments. Um, and obviously another aspect of this is the more people that you have involved in these processes, um, the more narratives and the more perspectives and hopefully the more specialization with regards to like what potential scenarios are linked to these future narratives are, um, which is why the kind of collaborative effort of Flower Tokens and Terra Zero in general is something that I wanted to kind of finish by highlighting. Um, and as is up on the screen, we have a couple of avenues of community building. Um, I actually left our Telegram group off this as well, but if you wanna get in touch in any way, in kind of any which way, shape or form, code, reach out, community, just whack us an email, join our Slack. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me.